Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Legion's Astartes Crusade Army List book uh, from the Horus Heresy range from Forge World. This book was first published in 2014, so a good couple of years ago. But if you've got the Betrayal at Kalf box set or you've just started a Warhammer 30k or Horus Heresy uh, Legion Space Marine Army, this book is for you. It's similar in a way to Horus Heresy's Mechanicum Tagmata Armalist book that uh, that came out towards the tail end of last summer. If you look at the page difference, the Mechanicum book is actually a little bit smaller and that's because it has missions and it has a bit of fluff whereas this pretty much just has the Armalist. It doesn't have any fluff, it doesn't have any missions or anything like that. So although the Mechanicum book has more pages, it's essentially got less um, data sheets and things like that. For £32 you get this quite nice large hardback book in red with kind of like a transfer or whatever on there. And you get a page keeper, page turner, red ribbon one. Very nice, great quality. I think all their books are made in China now. Even the expensive Horus Her Heresy black books um, that are £74, they're made in China. I'd love to know how much how much they really cost to, to produce. If you want to have a look at what one of those books entails and you want to see my review, check out my Book 6 Retribution uh, book review that I probably put out a little while ago. But anyway, let's get back to this this review of this Crusade Army list. So, lovely, uh, lovely colours. I do apologise about the sun. There's nothing much I can do about the position of that. Be that as it may, you get the pages that are kind of silver, they've got a silver finish to them. This book has about 93 pages to it, something like that. So not a huge amount, it's under 100 pages. It's got a lot of data sheets and things in here, so and we'll, we're going to spend quite a while. So grab yourself a beer or tea or coffee, whatever, and we'll go straight through it. So there's a bit of a foreword at the start, contents, what I will do is I'll quickly just go through the contents on the on the back because I, I, I'll put it there for you nice and clear so you can have a look. This is the one thing that I think Forge World are currently lacking. They have these incredible books um, but people, unless they watch videos, they don't really know what the contents are and honestly I really think they're missing a trick. They should have the contents of their books. If you're asking someone to pay £74 for a a book printed in China or £32 for a codex that supports the, your models. You've got to have the, the contents, I'm afraid. So that's your contents. Let's let's go through it. So your Legions of Stardust Crusade Army List. Straight away, you've got Battles in the Age of Darkness. It gives you a bit of a, an overview of using the models, using the Lords of War. It talks about the 25% rule. Your Lord of War, let's just say it's a Fellblade, for instance, at 525 points. Essentially what this 25% rule means is that you can't use it in a 2,000 point battle. You'd have to use it in a 2,250 point battle. But I don't know how on earth, what on earth the size game is going to have to be for you to use your Warlord Titan. Then it also talks about destroyer weapons, optional destroyer weapon, count as uh, strength 10 if you want to use that. And then you've got using other Imperial units from Forge World books in Horus Heresy games, which is awesome because essentially you could then use a Bane Blade if you wanted, because for 15 points, you just increase Ballistic Skill to Ballistic Skill 4, and you're essentially saying that they've got Space Marine crew in there. I don't really get things like that because Space Marines are much bigger, and tanks, as you know, are quite confined spaces. And I would have thought that, you know, tanks would have had to be modified and things. But be that as it may, it goes into a little bit of depth there. Then straight into your force organisation charts. Really nice. You've got one for your fortifications, one for the Leviathan force organisation chart. So say you want to use your Reaver Titan, you can do. Put it as a Lord of War and then you've got all these extra kind of optional detachments. There's specific rules and things associated with that. Onslaught Force, where you've got HQ, Troops, Heavy Support. Oh sorry, the Leviathan, that could be a Primark as well if you wanted. And then you've got your standard attachment thing with your HQ, two troops, and then you've got allied detachment also. So that's that's quite nice, nicely laid out. Then you've got your allies. It talks about you've got Imperial Army, Mechanicum, and then you've got all of the main legions. You've got your Legion Warlord traits, one to six. I won't go through them. And then straight away, just like that, 
14 pages in, you're into your HQ. Legion Praetor, 100 points, he's pretty beefy. I looked on Forge World's website, it looks like there's only two Legion Praetor models anyway. So at the moment, a lot of Legion armies are going to have similar Praetor. Unless you wanted to use a special character or someone from the character series as your Praetor, I'm sure people will be fine with that. Here are all the rules. They've got these Master of the Legion and then rights, Right of War, different Rights of War. You've got Orbital Assault, Spearhead, Angel's Wrath and Pride of the Legion. Then a little bit of a step down from that, you've got your Legion Centurion. I've got one of these models, um, 50 points. It looks pretty good. It just reminds me of just like a Space Marine Captain, but... Um, without the three wounds really. You can give it uh, a specific role, so chaplain, master of signal, champion, librarian. And then it gives them specific kind of war gear and things based on their role. And then you've got your command squad, which only three space marines, two uh, marine chosen and one standard bearer, which is a bit odd because Forge World you have your champion or chosen and a standard bearer. You're gonna to have to pull another chosen from somewhere, but you've got that little command squad. And that's your HQ done, straight into elites. You've got your Legion Vet Veteran Tactical Squad, Legion Destroyer Squad, Terminator Squad, and you can change your Terminator armor. So I'm assuming that's just either your normal Terminator armor or your Tartarus pattern for Cataphractii. Um, armor for free. If so, the entire unit must must take that. Cataphractii armor is, I think it's got a better invulnerable save, but it has some different types of rules um, to it. Then you've got Tech Marine Covenant, which you've got Cybernetica. Then you've got an Apothecarian Detachment, Legion Dreadnought Talon, so just your normal kind of Dreadnought. Contempt to Dreadnought Talon, so one to three, like with the normal Dreadnoughts. Legion Rapier Weapons Battery, Laser Destroyer Ray, Quad Mortar, Graviton Cannon. Your Legion Mortis Dreadnought, your Contemptor Mortis Dreadnought. And then you're into your troops. So you've got your Legion Tactical Squad, a little bit different than 40k in a way, because you have your 9 and then you have a Tactical Sergeant. Similar kind of points, but instead of They Shall Know No Fear, they have this Fury of the Legion, where if five of the models rem remain in the unit with bolters, you can elect them to make a Fury of the Legion attack in the shooting phase, as long as they didn't move. Essentially, it means they can fire their bolters or bolt pistols twice against a single target. Pretty, pretty decent. So that's the main, main kind of difference. And also, you can have an, an additional 10. So you can have a, a squad of 20 Space Marines, if you, if you really wish. Uh, Legion Assault Squad, same kind of thing, you can have 20 of those, but they're armed with uh, bolt pistols and chainsaws or combat blades. Legion Breacher Siege Squad, they've got this uh, boarding shield, which kind of is it's a bit of a difference in damage coming in and things like that. Legion Tactical Support Squad, Reconnaissance Squad, which I always think that Reconnaissance Squad, they've got like sniper rifles and things and they can change their bolt for a sniper rifle, shotgun and, and so on. Then you've got dedicated transport, so you've got your Rhino, it's got the repair room, your Legion drop pod, your Legion Dreadnought drop pod, and then you're into your fast attack. So you've got your Legion Seeker squad, you've got your Outrider squad, which have their bikes, your attack bike squadron, your Sky Hunter squadron, they've got jet bikes. And then you've got your Primaris Lightning Strike Fighter, um, because I think when this book came out, the Legions, they didn't have a, a dedicated fighter, so they didn't have the Xiphon Fighter. I don't think that came out. I think the Xiphon Fighter came out last year. I could be wrong, though, but I think that's the reason why it's not in here. If it had been out by then, it would have been included. Then another fast attack, you've got your Tarantula Sentry Gun Battery. You've got your Anvilus Pattern Dread Claw Drop Pod. So the Dread Claw... You can have 10 models in there or a single dreadnought. Then it's got heat blast and um, fire sweep and things like that. So, And then land speeder squadron. To me that just looks like a normal, normal kind of land speeder. Then you've got your storm eagle assault gunship. You can carry 20 in there. But unfortunately you can't carry any dreadnoughts. So it's just the 20. And then you've got your legion javelin attack speeder squadron. So I think that's the attack speeder. Then you've got a Deathstorm drop pod. And then you're into my favourite, which is always my favourite, heavy support. Legion heavy support squad. Essentially you can have them with missile launchers and things like that. You can have 10 of them 
that makes sense. You've got your Legion Predator Strike Armor Squadron. It's going to have up to three in one kind of squadron. The main cannon is the Predator Cannon. So it's not the all, it's not armed with an auto cannon. Um, and this Predator Cannon is, I think it's heavy four. So it's got two extra shots than, than your normal auto cannon. And they're quite cheap, really. Then you've got your Legion Land Raider Battle Squadron. They kind of confuse me a little bit here because they've they've put all three in one kind of selection. They could have put it as three separate ones, but they've they've bunched them all together. Um, they've got the Phobos, the Proteus, and the Land Raider Achilles. Then you've got your Fire Raptor in uh, heavy support. Excellent gunship. Obviously, it's got the um, the Avenger Bolt cannon, and then you can have the Reaper Auto Cannon battery, which is four shots each each battery. Uh, and it's twin linked, so you, you're kicking out eight shots, and then your Avenger Bolt is kicking out seven, so that's already 15 shots. Then you've got a different type of Achilles um, Land Raider, which is the Alpha pattern, which has this enhanced Ferromantic Rights, which is just a little bit more survivable. Then you've got your Legion Artillery Tank Squadron, you can have a Basilisk, Medusa or Whirlwind. Again with the Basilisk it's got that Earthshaker Cannon, 240 inch range, it's quite crazy. Then Legion Vindicator, you can have it with that Laser Destroyer Array. Your Legion Spartan Assault Tank, one of the best vehicles out there right now. Because you can give it a Flare Shield and it's got 5 hull points and all the rest of it. And essentially it, it's got 4 LAS Cannons that are twin linked as well as it being able to carry 25 so you can carry more than a than a storm eagle you can carry your your 20 uh, tactical marines and the the praetor or or primarch whoever around very safely in one of them then you've got your legion Sestus assault ram you've got your sakaran venator tank destroyer it's got this neutron beam laser it's only 36 inch range but it's a vehicle, it's a, it's a fast tank, so it can definitely close the distance. And then you've got your normal Legion's car and battle tank, excellent value for points because it's got the accelerator auto cannon, which is heavy six, uh, rending and rapid tracking, so things can't take a, a jink save against it, pretty damaging to flyers. Then you've got your Legion Caribdis Assault Claw. Your Whirlwind Scorpius, which has got an insane multi multi launcher, which can have basically four shots, three little the little blasts, but they're AP three, strength eight, range forty eight. So it's a much better than a than a Whirlwind. At kind of elite troops, it specifically will hunt out Space Marines pretty well because it's barrage as well. And then we're into the Lords of War. So you've got the Stormblade, which I was a bit puzzled about. Forgewell do do the model, it's a combination of the plastic Bane Blade that GW make and then it's got some Forgewell bits like the, the top and the Plasma Blast Gun. And that's what it is, it's just a Plasma Blast Gun on wheels. It's the same weapon as you've got on your Warhound Titans. Then you've got your Cerberus Heavy Tank Destroyer, which has got the Neutron Laser Battery, which is just crazy. Yes, it's not a Strength D, but it is 72 inch range and it's got some extra little rules associated with it. Then you've got the Typhon Heavy Siege Tank. I'm very, very tempted to get one of these because if it doesn't move, it's 48 inch range, strength 10, massive seven inch blast, not an apocalyptic, but it's seven inch. So it's bigger than your normal ordnance five blast and no cover saves allowed. That just, that's incredible. It's like the daddy of the Vindicator because it's on a Land Raider's chassis. Whereas the Legion Cerberus, the rear arm is only 13. And I, at first I thought that was a mistype, but apparently that's the case. I don't know why, because it looks like it's on a Land Raider's chassis. Be that as it may, uh, the Typhon's got 14 all round, um, and it's less points. Then you've got the Falchion. Again, it's got a, it's got a Volcano Cannon. It's basically Twin Link Volcano Cannon, because it's, it's, uh, it's got two of them, really. But then you can have four last cannons that are twin linked as well. You fire all your four last cannons at a Warhound and then you fire the Volcano Cannon. It's going to cause a lot of damage. Then you've got the Malkador Assault Tank. Then the Fell Blade. I do like it's two different types of shots. It's got the high explosive shell. Same, both same range. The high explosive, strength A, AP3. Then it's got like an armor piercing shell as well, which is strength, be better strength, better AP, and it's armor bane, but it's only a little, little blast. 
but I do like the versatility of, of this. And remember, it's still got the whole mounted demolisher siege cannon, it's still got its quad mounted LAS cannons, and it's got a twin linked heavy bolter. So, for the points, you're getting so much damage output. Then you've got the glaive, which has this Volkite carronade. Um, which has got this heavy beam, which again ignores cover, deflagrate and haywire. Pretty, pretty horrific weapon that. But it's 625 points, almost as much as a, a Warhound. Then you've got your Thunderhawk transporter and your Thunderhawk gunship. I'd love if they made these in plastic. I go on about it and, you know, but now that they've got the Stormbird coming out soon, if they can make the Thunderhawk in plastic, I've said it before, they'll just fly off the shelves. But Thunderhawk is still excellent um, choice as always. It's unfortunately got the same kind of armour as a Storm Raven. And think how small a Storm Raven is. But that's getting quite pricey now because with the Turbo Laser Destructor, and let's face it, you kind of want to go with that, it's going to set you back at 775 points. And then the fortification is the Imperial Castellum Stronghold. And then the picture that you've seen in the Tag Martyr Codex is there. And then you've got optional heavy support, so you've got your Thalax cohort, so a bit of a nod to the Mechanicum here, and Castellex uh, class battle automata maniple. If you've read the Horus Heresy books, sometimes they'll load up a Thunderhawk or Stormbird with, with some optional Mechanicum kind of automata and, and things like that, Cybernetica, and they'll have a Tech Marine and, and he'll go about and they'll just go and, and kill and, you know, follow orders basically. So that is brilliant that they've included that in there. And then you've got the Legion Astarte Special Rule, you've got the Primarch, you've got Automated Artillery, Battlesmith, Command Tank, all those kind of things. Then you've got the War Gear, talks about all your weapons, your Kiri's um, Pattern Assault Cannon, pretty decent, and obviously all the Bolt Kite and uh, things like that, which is just down there. So more weapons, and then you've got some combat weapons. and some equipment, and in the equipment you've got power armor as well, cataphracti eye, here we go. They have slow and purposeful rather than relentless, but their invulnerable save is four plus, so two plus, four plus, pretty decent for cataphracti eye. Uh, then you've got all your weapon profiles, and that is it, that is the end of the book. Gives you a bit of an advert for book one, two, and three, which is kind of where all of this information is, is amalgamated to. This is This book is the amalgamation of those first three Horus Heresy books, but in one kind of like neat package, instead of you having to cart round three kilograms or whatever it is of, of leather bound books that equate to over 200 pounds worth of um, books, you can just carry around this 30 pound book and it's a lot more manageable. And that's the kind of reason. I, I'm aware that this book is gonna get uh, updated at some point this year. I'll definitely be getting that and um, because we've had some new units and new models and things since then and it just gives you another little bit of an advert at the back. So uh, is this book worth it? Well if you're if you've got the Betrayal at Calf box set and you're thinking about creating a, a 30k army um, or a Horus Heresy Legion this is definitely the book for you because it's got all of the weapon profiles and the data sheets and things, and you look at some of the units and the rules and things, and, and you'll you'll instinctively go, oh yeah, that that's that's pretty good. I want my one of them. And it's always nice to look at four twelve models and things and know what their rules are as well. And it gives you a better kind of idea of of them and how they're going to perform. But anyway, that's uh, the end of this review of the Legion Astartes Crusade Army List. Thanks ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.